Welcome to SACCONS 101, an educational activity of the International Astronomical Union's Center for the Protection of the Dark and Quiet Sky from Satellite Constellation Interference, or CPS. This activity aims to promote factual understanding of large satellite constellations in order to help participants come to reasoned and informed opinions about this important social and technological issue. Today's topic is mitigations. The Center's mission is to coordinate efforts and unify voices across the global astronomical community with regard to the protection of the dark and quiet sky from satellite constellation interference. My name is John Barentine, and I co-lead the Community Engagement Hub of CPS. My training is in optical and infrared astronomy, and my current professional work involves freelance consulting. Since 2019, I have worked on policy and advocacy issues around large satellite constellations. I will present to you on today's topic. These are the learning objectives of the SACCONS 101 curriculum. Participants will gain exposure to these ideas in the course of viewing all of the presentations in the series. Opportunities to learn more about any given topic will be offered in each module, as well as to contact the Center for further information. SACCONS 101 is a series of learning modules covering eight broad subject areas. Each module is a short, self-contained video presentation covering one of the subject areas. They can be viewed individually or in any combination up to the full set. Viewing all eight presentations constitutes exposure to the complete SACCONS 101 curriculum. Today, we will focus on the topic of mitigations. In the next few minutes, I will discuss each of the following elements that relates to the topic of this video. There are several approaches to reducing the impact of satellites and space debris on astronomy. Some are actions that space companies can take in modifying their satellite designs. Others focus on the collection and processing of astronomy data. We focus on this idea first. One of these techniques involves carefully scheduling observations. Telescopes that see small parts of the night sky at once can avoid looking in directions where satellites will be at a given time. This requires knowing very accurately where satellites are in space. Satellite operators can help by providing this information early after launch. But this approach will not work for every telescope. Some, such as the Rubin Observatory's Survey Telescope, see large parts of the night sky at once. Others use cameras that take very long exposures. And if there are many tens of thousands of satellites in orbit, this method may not be practical. It is inevitable that some telescope images will include satellite streaks. When these streaks cover faint cosmic objects beyond, the quality of the data may be degraded. Sometimes astronomers can recover some of the otherwise lost information using computer processing. This only works well for cases where satellites are not too bright. Brighter objects can yield too much light for cameras to efficiently detect. In such cases, astronomers lose whatever light information is behind the satellite streak. Very bright objects may cause so-called ghost images on the same detector that can impact observations and modern light detectors can suffer effects from these bright objects in other ways. Their electronic components can amplify spurious signals, causing false detections. Astronomers continue to improve hardware and software to deal with these problems. Certain changes to satellite designs and modes of operation can help reduce their impacts on astronomy. Next, we will describe some of these changes and how they can help. Fewer satellites in orbit means fewer objects reflecting sunlight to the ground. One option for reducing satellite impacts on astronomy is to launch fewer of them. Smaller satellite constellations have a long history dating to the 1970s. They are less expensive to build, launch, and operate. Fewer satellites also means fewer opportunities for collisions that generate space debris. A less crowded space environment is arguably more sustainable than one that is very dense with satellites. But this solution comes with practical challenges for satellite operators. To achieve the goals of vast telecommunications from orbit, 
they need large fleets of satellites. Smaller constellations in higher orbits could reach all of the Earth at the expense of slower speeds. But putting satellites into higher orbits means they spend more time in direct sunlight. This also means they are visible from Earth later into the night than objects in low orbits. At certain altitudes, they remain in sunlight all night long as seen from some parts of our planet. This argues for putting objects into lower orbits such that they spend more time in the Earth's shadow. There are certain trade-offs involved in this approach. Lower orbits mean that satellites in them move more quickly than those in higher orbits. Thus, they do not remain over any one part of the Earth for very long. Ensuring continuity of coverage requires many satellites to be overhead at once. That leads back to the need for larger constellations of satellites with the problems we described earlier. Engineers continue to work on satellite constellation designs that attempt to address these concerns. Another means of reducing the brightness of satellites is to make them smaller. The sizes of their solar panels is a particular concern. Those panels are often much larger than the main parts of satellites themselves. To collect enough sunlight to power their electrical systems, solar panels must be of a certain size. Improving their energy efficiency can result in generating more electricity with smaller panels. Another approach is to change the way the panels are oriented in space. Certain angles tend to reflect more sunlight to the ground than others. Satellite operators are investigating ways of directing satellites to reduce this tendency. There are special concerns about satellites around the time of launch and near end of mission. This has to do with the changing altitudes of these objects. Some satellites in constellations are initially launched into low orbits. Over weeks to months, small rockets aboard the satellites raise them to their final altitudes. This approach allows engineers time to examine each satellite and make sure that it operates properly. As their orbits rise, these satellites become less bright. Responsible deorbiting at the end of mission involves a similar process, but in reverse. Satellites coming back down to the Earth get brighter as their orbits drop. At the same time, they appear less often in the sky because they spend more time in the Earth's shadow. But changes to the orientation of those satellites with respect to the ground can offset some of their brightness. Performing careful satellite rolls during ascent and descent can reflect less sunlight to the Earth. These maneuvers can help limit impacts to the night sky during those times. Satellites reflect a considerable amount of sunlight to the ground. This is in part because their surfaces are often complex and shiny. The materials from which satellites are made tend to be very reflective to light. One idea to reduce this tendency is to darken their surfaces. Some experiments have added dark coatings on satellite surfaces. Rougher surfaces also tend to make them less shiny in reflected light. This approach works and it has reduced the brightness of some satellites. But it causes problems for both satellite operators and astronomers. One immediate result of the dark coatings is that they absorb more sunlight. This heats the interior of the satellite. Without an efficient way to remove this excess heat, it can shorten the life of a satellite's electronic components. As the temperature increases, the satellite surfaces emit more infrared light. This can overwhelm faint infrared emissions from objects in the cosmos that astronomers want to measure. So far, we have limited this discussion to optical and infrared concerns. But astronomers are also worried about how vast number of satellites will affect their radio observations. Radio interference in satellites is a concern at all times of day and night. Radio astronomers observe the cosmos 24 hours a day, and satellites broadcast radio waves to the ground even when they are in the Earth's shadow but satellite operators can take certain steps to reduce the effect that they have on radio telescopes. One example is switching transmissions off when satellites are over the sites of those telescopes. 
If the positions of satellites in space are well known, operators can simply pause transmissions when needed. Astronomers are helping by providing precise locations of their telescopes. Also, improvements in transmitter and antenna technology can further reduce interference. These advances can help prevent satellites from broadcasting outside of allowed frequencies. They can also decrease the amount of radio energy power needed to link satellites to ground stations. Most of the topic covered so far has dealt with changes to satellites themselves as a way to limit the harms to astronomy. But there is also the matter of ensuring that the space environment remains safe for satellite operations. Crowded orbital space increases the chances of collisions that result in the destruction of satellites. Despite active space traffic management, the potential for accidents remains. We also know that rising night sky brightness from space objects is most sensitive to the smallest space debris. To make space more sustainable and limit collisions, operators should intentionally disable and dispose of their satellites when their missions are complete. The United States recently set a new international standard calling for the responsible disposal of satellites within five years of the end of mission. This reduces the chances that owners of satellites will lose their ability to control them. When control is lost, derelict satellites become more of a collision threat. Options for disposal include boosting them up to so-called graveyard orbits and or deorbiting them. Mitigating the impact of satellites on astronomy may include changes to legal regulations. Countries that allow satellite launches from their territories set the rules for those launches. They also license satellite operators to make radio transmissions from satellites to the ground. These licenses may come with requirements that can include mitigations to benefit astronomy. But to date, they tend to consider only one satellite at a time and not the total effects of many satellites. The resulting effects of large constellations may be much greater than adding together all of their satellites one by one. A shift in the regulatory philosophy would start to consider the so-called aggregate effects of large satellite constellations. These large constellations may have to meet higher standards in order to account for these effects. Thank you for watching this presentation. For additional information about this and other subjects related to large satellite constellations and their impacts on astronomy and the space environment, contact the center at the address or website shown here.